Cheryl and Barry Eldridge arrived in New Zealand from the UK in 1971. They bought a thousand hectare block of marginal hill country in Wairarapa, being run conventionally, if not profitably, with sheep and beef. The Eldridges bought a flock of Gotland sheep and embarked on a 13-year breeding programme. In 2003, they registered the Stansborough Grey breed. Now, with a herd of 1,200 Stansborough Greys and 60 alpaca, and with the help of Wool Yarns New Zealand, they create unique fabrics for use worldwide. Wool Yarns is one of the few yarn spinners operating in New Zealand. General Manager Neil Mackey explains how his company fits into the wool sector and Stansborough's business in particular. Wool Yarns is a woolen yarn spinner based in Wingate, Wellington. We are a fine woolen spinner that produces yarns for knitting, hand knitting, weaving, carpet manufacturing. This is uh, lamb's wool from Stansborough. We take this once it's been scoured and process it into yarn for Stansborough, and they either weave it or put it into garments or, or hand knitting. It has all the properties of every other wool, but it's just unique in its color range, its natural color range. This is, is that how it comes off the sheep's back. And as you can see, the, the, the different variations and the different colors of the different fibers. So it, it can be challenging uh, to make sure that we get consistency of color, but however, um, our processing is such that we can overcome those challenges. It's a shame to see the wool industry in New Zealand decline over the last decade. However, wool yarn's success is based on its unique product ranges doing niche products, niche fibres, and servicing small to medium-sized clients. The New Zealand industry has got to continue to develop into those niche markets. If they don't do that, they just won't be able to compete against the, the likes of China and India as commodity spinners. Stans was started nearly 24 years ago now. I'd read about a grey breeder sheep, which I was quite interested in, and I decided I'd take the plunge and look at those. I talked to a lot of designers at the time, and what they were telling me is there was no New Zealand textiles being made here. A lot of the wool was being sent overseas, and they were having to buy it back. And I thought, well, this is ridiculous. And we were getting into that clean green sort of period at the time, if you like. And I thought, well, if I could supply something that was pure and natural that was made in New Zealand and aimed for high end, there's possibly a market for that if I could make something with a bit of design edge to it. We were opening markets, having started making our first textiles. In, um, we opened the market in London, and we decided we'd take on the American market as well. So we tried the market in New York. We sent samples to New York. And when the samples in, were in New York, they got into the hands of Nyla Dixon, who was the costume designer for Lord of the Rings. Now, she was working with Peter Jackson, and they didn't know about us at the time, we didn't know about them. I knew they were filming it, but I had no idea what sort of size movie it was going to be. And when Nyla came back to start working with Peter Jackson, she actually came to find us. And being Kiwis, we said, oh, yes, we can do that, having no idea how much it was going to get involved. We ended up working with her for oh, the next two or three years, really, um, designing the textiles. She loved what we were doing. It fitted Tolkien's description in his book exactly. Um, and it's, you know, sort of almost hand-woven, the pieces, and the greys were the natural greys he talked about. A primitive breed of sheep that they were talking about would have been the same sort of era, so that it just fitted perfectly. And then we started creating the textiles and went from there. I think the biggest challenge for Stansborough has actually been being able to manage both sides of the industry. I've been lucky in that I've been able to have a foot in both camps and travel a little bit. Having an interest in design, I've been able to talk to the designers, find out what's needed, and then actually go back to the farm and create what it is the market's needed. And I think that's where the gap is. It's very hard if you're farming all day to be able to get out there and actually appreciate what it is the market needs from the end product. So we did it backwards. We found out what the market wanted, and then we worked back to get the wool that we wanted to produce the product. I think we've changed direction slightly. We've gone back. Um, Stansborough's learned to go back to its core business, which is designing creative textiles that are in line with the planet. They're clean and green and chemical free. And keeping it 100% New Zealand is really, really important. Not just saying part of it is New Zealand, 100% New Zealand. And I think there's a great um, um, potential for New Zealand walls.
These looms actually date back to the 1890s. We've got six still working. They're the only six still working commercially in the world that we know of. These were designed to make the first worsted fabrics. They were actually designed to make the Harris tweeds. Um, they were the first commercial looms ever made. Prior to this, everything was hand-woven. So this was the Industrial Revolution you're looking at. So there's a fascination with the machinery, but they also make um, good quality textiles. They've got lovely woven selvages. They're 100 years of wear and tear worn in. So every piece that comes off is a little bit individual. There's never two pieces exactly the same. So it creates almost a hand-woven feel. Richard commissioned them all up and got them going for me. We're very lucky to have him. My partner's an engineer and he and I started and we did our first textiles on the two looms, but Richard joined us probably about, I don't know, eight years after that and he's been with us ever since, so we tie him to the loom so he can't leave. <laughs> Visiting the clients direct and actually um, being able to tell the whole story and for the director of a company to actually bother to go and visit them gives you a, a leg up to start off with. They wanted to hear about the farm and having being passionate about the farm and my product, being able to tell them the story about the farm helped a lot to sell the product, I think. This is the Fellowship Cloak, which has obviously became so well known from Peter's Lord of the Rings. We sell them all over the world and we're still selling them all over the world. Um, since the Hobbit movie, um, a lot of the Hobbit fans are obviously Lord of the Rings fans and they all still want the authentic garments that they wore in the movie. So our job is to recreate them and give them the real McCoy, not some look-alike made out of some other fabric. It's actually as it was when they made it in the movie. This is the famous Gandalf scarf. This is very magic. It's got incredible magical qualities. It's got mithril um, yarn in it, which was mined in Moria. This, it's one of the very rare commodities left in the world. If you've read the book, you'll know all about the mithril. It's very long because Gandalf's very tall, but it's very magical and very precious. And I think as the movie goes on, it'll become more precious. Um, and of course, we've got into hat making, the Gandalf hat, and of course, both as Bofa's hat, which is again made out of our leather. They used a lot of leather of our pelts in the Hobbit movie as well as the textiles. And this happens to be one of the hats we've recreated and we're selling lots of these all over the world too. We do a lot of top-end corporate gifting, but we also do a lot of um, top-end lodges. We do interior stores. We work with a lot of interior designers on projects if they're doing a boutique, boutique hotel or maybe a top lodge that's in Waiheke Island and they want something different and they want to show their visitors it's 100% New Zealand um, and the story behind it, they love the story. So, um, yeah, we do blankets and throws. Yeah, summer weight, winter weight, you know, lovely big throws. I remember Barry and I visited New York and Donna Karen had opened a new store in New York and this was going back a few years and we actually went to the store that she just opened and we saw some of our products on the shelf in there and just to see our product, having seen it on the sheep a few weeks ago and seeing the product right the way through and actually see it in a classy establishment like that, it was, yeah, you couldn't put price on that. That's really rewarding. <laughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.